I think it was with the other review materials, but I can't remember. I see. All right, so here we go. Question number one. If I were you, I would stop looking and start paying attention. If everything is nicely organized in a free ring binder, it should not be wrong to find it. Okay, so the first thing on the paper is a picture that looks like this. And the directions say, we're going to write an equation, a sine equation and a cosine equation. Obviously, this is not a tangent picture or a secant or cosecant picture. This is a sine or a cosine. So we are going to write the equation. So remember, when you do that, there are numbers that are going to go into your equation. So you're going to write a sine equation and a cosine equation, doesn't matter which one you do first. And parts of those two equations are going to be the same because the height of the curve is the same, whether it's a sine or cosine, and the period of the curve is the same, whether it's a sine or cosine. The only thing that might be different is where we start looking at the picture. So, when you look at that, what do you see? A sine or a cosine? What do you want to start with? Sine. sine. So if you're looking at it as a sine, you are probably looking at this right here. That would be my guess, if you're looking at it as a sine. So clearly, if that's a sine, its amplitude is two, and its phase shift is negative pi over six. So here in the parentheses, we're gonna have x plus pi over six, right? Now, the period of the curve from here to here is how far? What is that distance? Four, six. So two pi divided by this number, whatever you wanna call it, that missing number, is four pi over six. To find the period of the curve, we take two pi for a sine and cosine, we take two pi and divide it by that number, right? So now I'm just gonna figure out what that number is by cross multiplying, did I start this? Yeah, so I'm gonna cross multiply. So 12 pi equals four pi n. I'm solving for n, so I'm gonna divide by four pi, and it looks like that number is a three. Now, when I look at this as a cosine equation, that's still two and that's still three. That part hasn't changed. But if I'm looking at it as a cosine, I've got options, but I could just start looking at it right here, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a cosine? Yeah. And if I look at that particular piece, then I don't have any phase shift, right? Mm -hmm. There is no phase shift because I'm starting right where I'm supposed to start with a cosine. Now, are there other possible answers to this problem? Yes, they will all have a two here and a three here, but depending on where you're looking, you will have, will have a different phase shift. Okay, next, find the exact, this is a no calculator quiz, so you will not be using the calculator at all on this quiz. So we have, we have to find the tangent of the angle whose sine is one fourth. Now remember, this is an angle. So I want to draw a picture of that angle. I am not going to be able to figure out what it is. I don't need to know what it is, but I have to draw a picture of it. Okay? Where is that angle? I need to double check something. Some of you are staring at me blankly. I want to make sure we've talked about this. Yeah, we've talked about this. All right, so where am I going to draw this picture? I'm 
going to draw that picture in quadrant one. How do I know I'm going to draw that picture in quadrant one? Because that's a positive number. Right? Now, the sign is one fourth. Is this going to be a special angle? The ones we looked at yesterday or whatever day that was, this was like a one and a two or something and it was special and we could figure out what that angle is, right? This is not special, but can I find the third side anyway? Okay, let's do that. Let's find the third side. Right now, I am just drawing a picture of this angle right here, just like I did yesterday. So what is my third side? Square root of 15. Somebody say three? 15. 15, yeah, 15. Square root of 15. 16 minus 1. Now, if this had been the question, I'd be in trouble. Because that means this angle right here, and I have no idea what it is without a calculator. But luckily, that's not what it says. What does it want to know? It wants to know the tangent of that angle. Well, that I can do because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the answer to the problem is root 15 over 15. So if there are two different kinds of problems we hear. One kind we did yesterday. And that was we actually found the angle. This wasn't here. We actually found the angle. Well, I could find this angle on my calculator, but without a calculator, all I can do is draw it. But I want the angle, I want the tangent, so that was easy, opposite over adjacent. Okay? Wait, isn't the opposite one over radical 15? Oh, wait, and then you divide the divide. Okay, all right, so now another question that we talked about yesterday that we will have on our quiz. I have some big, long trigonometric thing. And it says find the period. So remember, how did we do this yesterday? How did we find the period yesterday? Find the period of each piece. So the period of this one will be 2 pi over 2, which is pi, right? The period of that one's pi. The period of this one will be 2 pi over a third, which is 2 pi times 3, or 6 pi. So this one's easy enough. You may not even have to write it out. This means that every pi we repeat. So pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, dot, 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 we repeat. This means every 6 pi we repeat. So 6 pi, 12 pi, 18 pi, and so on. Well, where's the first time they're both going to repeat together? 6 pi. 6 pi, yep. So the period is 6 pi. Okay. Next one, you have angle of negative 10 degrees, and it says find the negative coterminal angle. Let's find the negative and the positive coterminal angle. Easy, easy, easy. How do we find coterminal angles? Add 360 or subtract 360. If the angle you're given is in degrees, if the angle you're given is in radians, then you don't add 360, you add 2 pi. Right. So this one's in degrees, so a positive one would be 350, and a negative one would be negative 370. Add and subtract a revolution. Now, if by chance you have your sheet, I'm changing the next problem because the next problem is a calculator problem, and I'm changing it to this. Find the cosecant of 2 pi and the cotangent of negative 3 pi over 4. So this is a two-part question. Same skill, different angles, different functions but we're gonna find the cosecant of two pi. Now tell me about two pi. It's on a line. In other words, we call it a quadrantal angle. And when we have a quadrantal angle, we cannot draw a triangle. We have to look at our unit circle, right? 
the unit circle centered at the origin with a radius of one. Okay, where's two pi? Which of these angles is two pi? Right here, Grace is pointing over here, are you with her? This is two pi. Two pi is a revolution, so it's in the same place as zero. On the unit circle, what are the coordinates of this point right here? One, zero. Here's the origin, right one, one, zero. So X is one, Y is zero, and R is one. We want the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the sine. The sine is Y over R, so this is going to be R over Y. All that thought, that, that rolling thought is in your mind. So R over, uh oh, R over Y will be undefined. Remember, some of these turn out undefined. Anytime you have a zero in the bottom, you're going to be undefined. And that happens. All right, cotangent negative 3 pi over 4. Where am I going to draw? What? Can you want to change that to degrees? What is the degree equivalent of negative 3 pi over 4? Not too much crap up here. Pi is 180 divided by 4 is 45 times 3 is 135. Right. You need to be able to do that without a calculator. I have confidence in you. We're finding the cotangent of negative 135. Okay, so where is negative 135? Well, that's going to be here, isn't it? Why am I going this way? Negative. So here we are. Always a butterfly bow tie. One of the wings, always, of the butterfly is what you draw. So if this is 135, what's that? 45, because that's 180. You have to go 45 more. What do I know about the sides of my triangle then if this is a 45, 45, 90? One, one, root two. And these are both negative. As it turns out, that's not going to matter. Because when I do cotangent, it's adjacent over opposite, and the negatives are going to cancel. So the answer is just 1. Negative 1 over negative 1. And then finally, the last question on this uh, quiz, <coughs> or the last type of question, I should say is going to be something like, uh, we know the secant of theta is less than zero, and we know the tangent of theta is also less than zero. So in which quadrant is theta? If the secant is negative, and the tangent is negative, this means negative, less than zero. If secant and tangent are negative, where am I? I heard, did somebody say third? Okay, I don't think so. Two, it's quadrant two. Guys, stop and think a minute. If it helps you, go ahead and identify your coordinates in, uh, you know, in all the quadrants, X and Y. Secant is which one? X, right? Secant goes with X because secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cosine is X. So if you want this secant to be negative, that means you have to have X be negative. So you're over here, right? But you also need tangent to be negative. What's tangent? Y over X. If you put Y over X, will this be negative? No, so it's not that one. It's this one right here. So that angle is in quadrant two.
Okay. All right. That's what your quiz is going to look like tomorrow. No calculator. Or not tomorrow. Whatever day it is. No calculator. Is it Friday? Yeah. All right. That's good. That's good. Gives you a day to digest it all. Okay. Let's get our notes out now. We are on page 47. We gotta, we'll finish this up today, and then uh, we'll, we got a few word problems to do. So we got a couple more, this period, another class period, and then we'll have some review, and then we'll have a test. So we're probably going to have a test next week. Probably. Not sure exactly. You miss a day next week, so we'll see. We'll see. It's coming up, though. It's coming up. All right. On page 47, the thing at the top says use a calculator round to the 10,000 decimal degrees. So that's telling me that my calculator must be set in degrees. So it is, mine is now, so I'm good. So now I'm simply going to type exactly what is there. If I put it in on my calculator, I'm just putting it in. So second tangent negative 1.43 and 10,000 so did you get negative 55.0349 degrees that's it that's all there is to it do the next one Same thing, this is just practicing with our calculator. So what'd you get for this one? 49.5524. Now this next one we gotta think about a little bit. What's the snag in this next one? It, yeah. Here, here's the deal. We have an angle whose secant is 1.98. This notation means find the angle whose secant is 1.98. Now be careful. If the secant is 1.98, isn't the cosine 1 over 1.98? So notice. I'm not typing one divided by second cosine. No, 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 no. The, the reciprocal, this is a secant value. So this is what I need to take the reciprocal of, the secant. So I'm going to type second cosine 1 over 1.98. If you are all confused, I want you to consider this picture. This would be a picture of this angle. The secant is 1.98 over 1. Right? What's the cosine of that angle? 1 over 1.98? So that's what I'm typing in. Second cosine, 1 divided by 1.98. And you should have gotten 59.6653. Right? Okay. Easy, easy, easy. Now we're going to do a few problems like the one on the quiz. Now we're going to do a few problems exactly the same kind, except we're going to do them without a calculator. So that means we won't know the angle, but we will be able to find the sine or the tangent or whatever we need. So here we go. This is like the one on your quiz tomorrow. It says sine of the angle whose tangent, and I'm going to go ahead and say 110. I'm going to write it that way. 110. You can leave a point one, I don't care. I'm gonna say 110. Because the first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture of this angle. Which quadrant is that gonna get drawn in? First. How do I know the first? Positive. Everything positive is drawn in quadrant one. So the tangent is 110. Does that look right? What does that make the other side? Square root of 101. 
I have no idea what that angle is. So this right here, I have no idea what that equals. But I do know that it's sine is 1 over root 101 or root 101 over 101. Where's this one going to be drawn? Inverse sine two thirds. Where's that drawn? First. Sine is two thirds. Let's go ahead and find this missing side. What do you think that missing side is? Square root of five. Pythagorean theorem: a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That'll be the square root of five. Now, I want to know the secant of that. Okay, this is the angle, start with the parentheses like we always do, this is the angle, drew it, now tell me the secant of that angle, 3 over root 5, or 3 root 5 over 5, aren't these easy, they look so much harder than they are. All right, another one. A tangent, cosecant, or inverse cosecant, three halves. All right, this is another positive. So it's another one that's going to be drawn in quadrant one. Now remember, we're not looking at this yet. We're just looking at the angle. What do I know about this triangle? Hypotenuse is three and opposite is two. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So hypotenuse is three and opposite is two. Uh, that's the same triangle, isn't it? Okay, somebody was asleep on the job when she made out the notes. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What's the tangent? I want to know the tangent now. Two over root five. All right, let's see if I do any better on the next one. This one says, oh, this one has a negative. All right, so the first thing you're going to have to do is remember where to draw it if it's negative. Where do I draw it if this is a negative number and it's an inverse sign? Four. That's a four. That's quadrant four. Remember? I gave you the rules yesterday, I think, didn't I, I hope? And three of them are in quadrant four, and three of them are in quadrant two when they're negative. You gotta know that. Unfortunately, it's just more stuff to know. But we're in quadrant four, and the sign is negative one-fifth. So tell me this side right here, what's this gonna be? Square root of 24, which is 2 root 6. Square root of 24. 2 root 6. 25 minus 1. And I want to know the cosine. Well, this is easy. The cosine is 2 root 6 over 5. Now, I have erased all my answers but the last two. So what I want to do is, I'm going to type, I'll type in this, on my calculator and see what the decimal is. And then I'll type in this on my calculator and see what the decimal is. And that will be a check for C and D. So I'm going to type this in on my calculator. Oh, this one's going to be hard because I don't have that button. So this one will have to be typed in as find the tangent of the angle whose sine is two thirds. Is your hand up, Grace? Yeah, can you plug it in before I do that one or anything? It does, it's gonna be easier for me to plug it in. These are gonna be exactly the same, but this is just gonna be easier to plug in. It doesn't matter. I'm just check, I just want you to see that the work that you did is exactly right. So if I type this in on my calculator, exactly what I wrote, tangent, Second sign 
2 divided by 3. The decimal I get is 0.8944. Now, if I do 2 divided by the square root of 5, the decimal I get is 0.8944. They're exactly the same thing. This is called, as always, the exact answer, and this is the decimal answer. Let's do this one real quick and see if these match. So 2 root 6, don't just close the parentheses, divided by 5. That one's 0.97979. Cosine second sine negative 1 fifth, 0.97975. I'm skipping five and six. Don't worry about them. And we're moving on to our word problems. We're going to do a bunch of word problems. So we don't need to do those other ones. Okay, so we've done some of this already, especially these first few. These should be easy for you. See if you can draw the picture for 4.8 number one. You've done these before. We did them back in like section 4.3 or something. We did some like this. This is a little easier. See if you can draw the picture. your picture looks like? Remember our angle of elevation and our angle of depression always go right here. They are equal so we can always put them inside our triangle and they always go right there. Whether they're elevation or depression they're going to go right here. Okay so now we got to write an equation. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Tangent, because we've got opposite and adjacent in the problem. So tan x equals 18 over 100. Obviously, we're going to use our calculator. Remember, when x is the angle, when it's hooked to the tangent or the sine or whatever, there's no algebra happening here. You're not multiplying by 100 or doing any kind of arithmetic at all. You're going straight to the calculator and typing, tell me the angle whose tangent is 18 over 100. When you are looking for an angle, that's what this means. We talked about that yesterday, find the angle. So second tangent, 18 divided by 100, 10.20. A little degree mark on that, and that's your answer. Hey, Zeus, what's the matter? You all right? Okay. All right, B, let's see if you can draw a picture of B. Look up here, just what your picture looks like. Everybody okay with that? Okay, sine, cosine, or tangent. What'd you pick? Sine. Sine. Great choice. Opposite hypotenuse. So sine 24 equals 19 over x. You are not using this button because you already know your angle, right? So we'd have to do the arithmetic here and get x by itself. So I hope you multiply by x 
and then divided by sine 24. That got x by itself. So 19 divided by sine 24, 46.71 feet. These looking familiar, remember doing some of these earlier? They're gonna get a little bit harder, but really not very much. All right, how tall is a flagpole? All right, draw your picture for this one. Write your equation and tell me the answer. Exactly. Exactly. How tall is the flagpole? 14 point, oh, what was it? 14.37. Yeah, that's about right. Let me do, do that for anybody. Did, did you were able to get that? Yeah. Okay. All right, now I can copy a few out of the book. Let's see what they are. Kirsten places her cylinder telescope on the top of the tripod five feet above the ground. She measures an eight degree elevation above the horizontal to the top of the tree. How tall is the tree? Okay. So here's the tree on the ground. And um, the tree is 120 feet away from her. How tall is the tree? Now, what's a little bit different about this one is what? Before we were we were uh, assuming that our eyeball is on the ground, but now they have told us specifically that the angle is being measured from a point five feet above the ground. Would you agree that's what it says? And the angle of elevation is eight degrees, but it is measured against the horizontal. So basically what we've done is we've moved the ground up five feet. And we wanna know the height of the tree. Now, is this dashed line also 120? So I should be able to find X, right? Now be careful, this is X. That's a triangle. I should be able to find X, right? What would that equation look like? Tan eight, yep, tan eight equals X over 120. Opposite over adjacent. So I can go ahead and do 120 tan 8. But to get the actual answer to the problem, which is the height of the tree, I'll have to do what with 120 tan 8? Add 5, yep. 120 tan 8 plus 5. Did you get 21.86? Everybody okay with that? All right, let's look at the next one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we've got a boat traveling. That means we're going to need our compass. So let's remember what that looks like. Let's draw it over here. This is my compass. North, south, east, and west. Zero, 90, 180, 270. And that's 360 again. 
right? That's how I'm measuring or, or drawing my courses. All right, so here we are at Fort Cleveland, right there. He's traveling on a course of 53 degrees. Okay, see you around. You're missing all the action. So 53 degrees, according to the compass, would you agree that's out here like this? And I'm gonna mark this 53. Remember, we're measuring from due north, so that's 53 degrees. Now, he averages 35 knots, and then they tell you a knot is a nautical mile per hour. So your car, you know, you measure your speed in miles per hour. That's land miles, statue miles. Nautical miles are a little bit longer because they take into account the curvature of the earth. So you notice that any vehicle that's traveling long distances, like a ship or an airplane, when they travel, they're actually not going in a straight line. They're going in an arc. Those are called nautical miles. That's why they're measured in nautical miles. No big deal for you. It's miles per hour. So if he is going 35 miles an hour for two hours, then how long is this vector right here? One more time. 35 miles an hour for two hours. 70. 70 miles. Technically nautical miles, but 70 miles. Okay, then what happens? Now he's going to change course. So I'm gonna, here he is now, and now he's gonna go on a course of 143 degrees. Okay, now where will 143 be? Won't that be down here? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that down here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just draw it down there somewhere. And make sure you label this 143 starting at due north. That's where we start measuring. So that's 143 degrees. And he's going on this course for three hours. So how long is this vector? 105? Okay. Now, what is the boat's bearing and distance from Port Cleveland? Okay. Okay. So here he is. And I, that looks horizontal. I'm not supposed to be. I didn't draw very well. But anyhow, let's, let's, would you agree that that is sort of the picture? This is probably a little bit too long. Let's see if I can make that look more. Let's do that. Okay. Now, what do I know about my picture that I have not marked? Let's think about our geometry. If this is 53, isn't this also 53? And if this is 143, isn't this 37? Because won't that make 180, the north-south? Which makes this 90 degrees, which means I have a right triangle. I know two sides of the right triangle. So how can I find the third side? Pythagorean theorem, right? So I will square 70 and square 105, add them together and take the square root. And I got 126.194. miles. So my job is to do two things. Find his distance 
and his direction. So the distance he is from where he started is 126. By the way, in the next chapter, we'll do exactly the same problems, but that won't be a 90. So we'll have other things, other ways of figuring it out. But as long as it's 90, the Pythagorean theorem is great. Now, I'd like to know what this green angle is right here. I'd love to know what that green angle is. Let me call it X. Any ideas how I could find that angle? Because that's going to help me give this direction. Tangent. I can say the tangent of angle X is 105 over 70. Keep in mind, there's the 90, so this is the hypotenuse. So this is the opposite side, and that's the adjacent side. So I'll go to my calculator, and second tangent, 105 70. Second tangent, 105 70. So my picture was actually right the first time. So this angle is 56.31 degrees. So the reality is going to be this is down here and this red line is coming down like this. But it doesn't matter. The picture doesn't matter. The math is going to tell you. The direction is going to be... is going to be all the way down to my red line, right? Technically, it's this line, but I'll just keep with the red that I've got. So the direction is going to be from due north. It's going to be the 53 and then the 56. So that adds together. So his direction is 109.31 degrees, which means he's actually pointing down here into quadrant four which is fine, the picture doesn't matter. You need the direction and the distance, and we've got it. All right, well that was kind of fun and interesting. Let's see. All right, a large helium-filled penguin is moored at the end of the phrase. Okay, two cables attached, you may angle. Okay. So, this is a little bit wordy, but I think we can figure out what's going on. Here are two points on the ground, and they're 10 feet apart. And up here is our penguin, and the cables are holding him in place. And they make angles of 48 and 40. All right, so here's the balloon, the hot air balloon's up there, and they got it cabled on both sides, so I'm trying to hold it in place. If the cables are attached 10 feet from each other, how high above the ground is the penguin? So really, X, ideas? Well, in chapter five, we're going to have a really slick way of doing this, but right now, these aren't equal. If these were equal, it would be isosceles and they would be. So, but, but you're on to something there, Grace and Grace. You guys are on to something. 
I can split this into two pieces, obviously, it is split. And if I call this one y, then this one would be 10 minus y. And somebody said tangent. So let's look at the 40. This is a right triangle. If I look at that right triangle, can I say that the tangent of 40 is x over y? Is that a true statement? Yeah. And what about on the other side? The tangent of 48 is x over 10 minus y? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't care. I'm a mom. I, I love mothers, but not during math class, okay? It was an emergency, ask permission. Now, what have I got here? Two equations. This is a harder version of what you did in first year algebra when you had to solve a system of equations that look like this. Remember? You've done millions of those. What do you do when you have a system of equations like that? Find the value of one variable. You substitute or eliminate, right? Now, this is a mess to try to eliminate, so I think I'll substitute. And it's easiest if I multiply the y over here, and I multiply the 10 minus y over here, won't they both be equal to x? And then I can set them equal to each other. So here we go, let's do that. We have a plan now. So we're going to get x by itself in both equations. So y tan 40 equals x. Now when I bring this over, it's going to be like a distribute. Do you agree with me? So it's going to be 10 tan 48 minus y tan 48 equals x. I'm bringing this over to here, and then I have to distribute, because it's a parenthesis. Now I'm going to set them equal. So y tan 40 equals 10 tan 48 minus y tan 48. Oh my gosh. What do you think we might want to do next? District. Okay, well I already distributed. What what do you want me to factor? I was thinking like you could factor like ten up or something like that. Or like take it out. Well the only ten is right here. So I can't really take a ten out. Oh I meant tan, not tan. Oh tangent? Well you can't factor out T A N. It has to be attached to something. So if I factored out tan forty eight I'd be right back to where I was before I distributed, so I don't want to do that. I want to get my y's on the same side. We talked about this way back earlier in the year. We want to get y on the same side. So we're going to have y tan 40 minus y tan, or excuse me, plus, plus y tan 48 equals 10 tan 48. So I'm putting both of the y terms on the same side of the equation. Then, Jacob, I can factor out a y, which is good, because that's what I'm trying to solve for. All right, so we wrote an equation for the left triangle, equation for the right triangle. Right there they are. We solved them for x. We got x by itself. Set those equal. Now we got the y's on the same side of the equation, and I factored it out. So now what will I do? Divide by the parentheses, right? Now, this might be a challenge on my calculator, so I'm going to have to be careful. When I divide, y is going to equal 10 tan 48 over tan 40 plus tan 48. Would everybody agree with that? Okay, now what you have to be careful about when you put it in your calculators, that's how you want to put it in. 
but be careful because as soon as you hit tan, you're going to pop up with a parenthesis. You have to close that. So you're going to have to close that every single time. Um, or it just keeps, it just does stuff you don't want it to do. So let's see what we come up with. Tan, tan. Right, so y, that this is our y right here in our picture, is 5.696. Okay, is that the answer to the question, though? No. No, this is what we want to know, right? But that's easy. Look up here. What does x equal? It equals y, which is on your calculator, times tan 40. So just say times tan 40. And the answer to the question is 4.78, and that unit was feet. All right, that was a challenge. Let's do one more, one more, and then we'll stop, okay? All right, here we go. Finding a monument height. All right, from a point 100 feet from the base. Oh, this is an easy one. We just have to remember how to type it in. From a point 100 feet from its base. Here's the monument. The angle of elevation is 34 degrees, 13 minutes, 12 seconds. How tall is the monument? This is a piece of cake compared to what we just did. This is going to be another tangent. And we're just going to have to remember how to type that in. So the tangent of that angle equals x over 100. So we're just going to take 100 times the tangent of that angle. So do you remember how to type that in? All right, let's do it. 100 tangent 34 degrees, 13 minutes, and 12 seconds. 68.01. Good job, people. That's a lot of math. A lot of math. We will finish this up next time. Your 4-7 um, your homework is due on Friday. And then we'll finish this up next time and start reviewing because we've only got two more problems to go. We'll start reviewing. All right, anybody have any questions?